27 years ago, I rang the villa phone, right? We were newlyweds, so I was on the love bug juice. And my husband annually goes to the DR for his trip to go golfing. And you know, I call. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, the Brooke Ashley. And today we are here to discuss The Real Housewives of Potomac, season eight, episode 13. And before we get into it, let me start off by saying that this was a decent episode but I was irritated that we are 13 episodes in and we're just now getting a sit down conversation between NECA and Wendy. At this point, we're all exhausted. We don't care. This sit down should have happened seven episodes ago. But y'all, this was a pretty good episode. And without further ado, let's just jump right on into it because you guys already know that we don't have a minute to spare. Oh, and a quick side note, I did not forget about Miami. I'm going to combine Miami. So look out for a double recap, this last episode and the finale, okay? So just wanna give you guys that disclaimer. Now we open up the episode with Mia and Gordon at home. So Mia starts asking Gordon if he had a good time at the Happy Eddie event, and he says that he did have fun. So now she brings up how she had a good time, but she got into it with Karen. So she says that she called Karen an old dog and Karen called her a trick. So Gordon wants to know, why did Karen call her a trick? Mia makes up some BS excuse. And now the producer goes on to ask Mia if she told Gordon about Karen accusing her of screwing a rapper. So Mia says that she left that detail out because he doesn't need to know all that. And I said, girl, you might as well come clean. You've told Gordon on several occasions that you want a divorce and you're in the middle of one right now. You're openly dating this new man who's also very messy and thirsty for attention, I might add. But I said, there's no point in leaving that part out because you do know that they're going to air this on TV. He's going to see that eventually. And Gordon knows who he married. He knows that he married a liar. So now Ashley comes over and she loves their apartment. And she brings up how she was in the penthouse when her and Michael were still together and how she loved it. Now I said, Ashley, don't compare your penthouse to Mia and Gordon's place because Mia and Gordon's apartment is actually nice, whereas the penthouse that you and Michael were in always looked cramped. So I said, girl, not too much, talking about, oh, I used to be in a penthouse too. Because girl, we only saw one room. And also sis, I remember in season two when Michael kicked you out of that penthouse. So again, not too much. So they sit down to chat and Mia says, girl, first things first, how are you doing? How's this divorce going? How are you feeling? So of course you have Ashley stammering and stuttering because one thing about Miss Ashley Darby, she likes to get into everybody else's business. But when it comes to her business, she wants to be tight lipped and evade questions. And that's just not how this goes. You cannot have it both ways. The same way you're messy and you instigate and stir the pot and get into everybody else's business, you cannot be upset when folks ask about you and what's going on in your life. So because Ashley is taking forever and a day to answer the question, Mia says, let me back up a bit, right? Because me and Gordon went out to lunch the other day and we were talking about your situation and Gordon said from an older man's perspective that me and him wouldn't divorce, we would have an arrangement. And the way Ashley was looking at her, it was giving very much, girl, shut your mouth because me and him do have an arrangement, but I don't wanna talk about it on camera. So here's where it gets good. And if you're an Ashley fan, you might wanna skip over it because I have nothing pleasant to say about her or Sheila. So anyhow, Ashley says that it's more so a security thing, still being married to Michael, and how growing up, her and her mom were evicted twice with their things thrown out on the streets. And then she goes on to add that it's definitely a fear thing because she does worry about if she's no longer with him, what if she's unable to keep up with the mortgage payments and that happens to her and her boys? And let me just stop right here because one, nobody told you to purchase a home for $2.2 million that you could not afford on your own. Had you just stayed in your budget and not tried to compete with Candace, because you are jealous of her, had you done that, sis, you wouldn't have to rely on Michael for the mortgage payments. And when you went on to say that, even though your family still helped you guys 
guys out, your mom was still unable to make ends meet, and how one day in second grade, your grandma picked you up from school and she showed you that your mom was out on the streets with all your stuff there on the curb. And I said, Ashley's tears don't move me because this was the same woman who was shading Candace about Candace having the parents who were able to help her out financially, no matter how old she is, knowing good and damn well that that's a flex. And that's the reason why you married Michael so that you could have security for you and your kids, right? So you're shading somebody who has the life that you wish that you had. And it's so sad that Sheila was out here chasing behind losers who had nothing to offer and now focusing on her and her kids' well-being and making sure that they were okay. Because remember, in season four, remember when Michael got mad at Ashley because Sheila wanted $4,600 a month and they were giving it to her. And Michael said, we can't do this because I'm not gonna pay for another grown man. Sheila was up there laying next to a man who was a bum and wanted money from her daughter and son-in-law, but she's okay sleeping with this man who has nothing to offer, a hot mess. And while Mia gets on my last good nerve, one thing about it, Mia is not afraid to get messy because the way she kept pressing Ashley, she said, so do you plan on getting divorced? And Ashley says, eventually I will, probably at the end of the year. I don't believe one word about her and Michael filing for divorce. They are dragging this out because one, Ashley knows that she has no intention of really divorcing him because she knows that if she does, her money will be messed up. Because remember, at last year's reunion, she admitted that if they do divorce, she won't be receiving spousal support or alimony or any of that. And the way Michael is petty and vindictive and evil and controlling, she knows that that man will put her through the ringer if they really do go through with this divorce. So now they change gears and Mia wants to know if Ashley is excited for Robin's trip to the Dominican Republic. And then we see a clip from last week's episode when they were all at NECA's house, Robin invited all of them to the DR and we see Karen saying, I know that Wendy's not here, but is she invited? And Robin says, look, anybody can come. I'm not excluding anybody. Wendy's welcome. But we cut to everybody in their confessionals. Robin says that she's not here to force conversation between people. She's just there to have a good time. Karen had me screaming. She said, it's a shame that Robin doesn't care about anybody healing. She just wants to have this trip to have fun. And then she says, well, I'm sure she does because after those signed notes at that hotel, I said, baby. <laughs> So we see Candace say that the Dominican Republic is big enough for her fabulosity and Robin's dry ass. Now, Candace, Robin might be dry, but just a few episodes ago, you were crying about the state of y'all's friendship. So apparently, once upon a time, Robin was not that dry because you claim that you guys are super close, you loved her, you were crying about where you guys stand right now, so I said, girl, not too much. I don't know, girl. One minute, you want to be friends with her. Now she's dry. I can't keep up. <laughs> so now we jump over to the big sit down conversation with NECA and Wendy. I'm not going to hold you guys. I'm not going to spend so much time on this scene because this sit down conversation should have happened eight episodes ago. I really blame NECA because NECA, this should have been after pickleball. You should have said, hey, Wendy, I want to talk to you immediately. I hate how things went down at pickleball. Let's talk. But instead, NECA waited and waited. Things got even worse. They got into it on the Austin trip. And now here we are having to suffer through this yet again. We all want to be done with this. I don't want to hear witchcraft, voodoo, osu, um, shrine. I don't want to hear it. This better be done. So Wendy sits down. It's tense between them. And NECA says, I just want to start off by saying, thank you for coming. You look nice. And I feel like it's a misunderstanding. And I hope we can move forward. Now, NECA, let me stop you right here. How is it a misunderstanding when you said that her mom sent your name to a shrine and then you called Wendy a bitch? That's not a misunderstanding. <laughs> she heard you clearly. <laughs> 
Wendy's like, okay, girl, I guess. So Wendy says, the only reason why she's here today, because the implications that she's putting out there about her mom are very damaging. She goes on to say that NECA can attack her all day, but when it comes to her mom, she's out of line. So NECA says, let's set the record straight. Before I joined this group, my cousin-in-law was getting phone calls from your family. So we learned from NECA that two weeks prior to her joining the group, she got word from Ivy, Wendy's sister, that Wendy had informed her that somebody else would be joining this group and Wendy was unhappy about it. So NECA goes on to say that because of that, that set the tone for her because she knew that Wendy already disliked her. So Wendy interjects and says, can we stop here? Because the biggest thing is that you called my mom a witch. Now, let me stop right here. I'm gonna give out a few disclaimers. Y'all know me. Y'all know that I'm fair. Y'all know I love Wendy, but... I'm going to always call something out if it's not making sense. In this moment, when NECA said, Wendy, I had already received word that you did not want me in this group. This was Wendy's opportunity, in my opinion, for her to clear that up and say, that's not true. That never happened. Why would I do that? There's no reason for me to dislike you or say that I don't want you in this group. The fact that Wendy said, let's stop and talk about how you called my mom a witch. And don't get me wrong, you have every right to demand an apology for your mom being called a witch. But my thing is this, in this moment, that's not what NECA was saying. And I feel like there is a little bit of truth that maybe you did not want another Nigerian woman on this show, and maybe you did want to be the only one. Again, I'm not saying that that's the case, but the fact that you didn't clear that part up, I did have a bit of a side eye. Because if that were me, I would have said, girl, why would I take issue with you coming in this group? That's ridiculous. I never said that. I was happy to hear that another Nigerian woman was coming on the show. That's what I would have said if I were Wendy. Again, maybe I could be off base, but I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I did think that was a bit suspicious that Wendy said, oh, well, let's not talk about that. Let's talk about how you called my mom a witch. Because if you guys are having a conversation where you're hashing everything out, then you should know that eventually you guys are going to touch on that too. Just my opinion, I have to be honest with you guys, but I did think that that was a bit weird that Wendy didn't clear that up and say, no, that's not true. Why would I not want a fellow Nigerian woman on this show? So NECA says, yes, I called your mom a witch because that was after the phone calls. So Wendy says, well, I spoke to my sister and my mom and they both denied the allegations that you're making. And we see the flashback of Wendy and her mom talking about it. Wendy's mom says that phone calls were made, but she was only saying, it's harder to make a friend, but it's easy to make an enemy. Now, I stated this very early on. I think I said this in episode four or episode five. I believe that some things were said in these phone calls and NECA is blowing it out of proportion, saying that the mom said shrine and witchcraft and voodoo. I just feel like the truth is somewhere in the middle. I don't believe that Wendy's mom went to the extreme that NECA is saying, but I would not be surprised if Wendy's mom did say something that was harsh. Does that make sense? I don't know. I just feel like we're not getting the full truth from either side. Because remember, in the first few episodes, there was confusion about whether NECA and Wendy even knew each other. It was all this, well, I don't know her, but then, oh yeah, well, I've seen her before at parties and I bumped into her all the time and she's friends with my mutual friends and my cousin. And it's like, well, what's the truth? Do you guys know each other in passing or not? But one minute is, oh, I don't know her. I've never seen her before. Then it's, well, I have seen her. We see each other all the time at events. It's one of those things where it feels like both things can be true. NECA came on this show with an agenda. 
and Wendy might have been threatened that NECA was coming on the show. Who knows? So NECA goes on to say that Wendy's family was acting on her behalf. And Wendy says, but what did I do? Tell me what I did because you keep saying my family. So you have NECA saying that Wendy's mom submitting her name to a shrine has impacted her and her family greatly. And I said, now NECA, I don't believe for one minute that you have been hurt, bothered, or afraid. I think that you're doing this to make Wendy out to be the villain and yourself out to be the victim. I just think that NECA has an agenda to maybe get Wendy off this show and take her spot. That's how it feels. So NECA says, despite Wendy's mom putting her name on a shrine, she's willing to move forward and put that aside. So Wendy's like, okay, girl, can you just acknowledge that you calling my mom a witch was uncalled for, and then you calling me out of my name, saying that I was a bitch, that wasn't right either? Can you just apologize for that? So NECA says, well, I apologize for calling your mom the name of a witch, and I apologize for calling you a bitch. In my opinion, this apology was too little too late because NECA should have been on that phone and said, hey girl, I am so sorry for saying that your mom was a witch and then calling you a bitch like that in front of everybody at Pickleball. Again, I feel like this was a conversation that should have been had earlier on and not when we're almost done with the season. But you have NECA laying it on thick with the dramatic saying that it's been a very disturbing encounter. And then with Wendy calling her a crackhead when they were in Austin. And I said, now girl, stop. We all know that you're not on crack, so let's stop. <laughs> <laughs> but Wendy, that read definitely fell flat. I definitely got secondhand embarrassment when I saw that episode. I was like, girl, really? A crackhead? Who are you, Judge Mathis? Now, if you watch Judge Mathis, you know that he was always calling somebody a crackhead. <laughs> This conversation did not go anywhere because it just was more of the same. NECA and Wendy going back and forth. NECA says that she's been greatly impacted. Wendy says, I've also been impacted and so have my children. So NECA says, I never brought up your children. And Wendy says, girl, you didn't. But when you call their grandma a witch and say that she's involved in voodoo and shrine, you know the implications. It reverberates through our lineage and you know that. So NECA claps back and says, well, when you submit somebody's name to a shrine, that also destroys somebody's lineage. So NECA says that when she first joined this group, she was so excited to know that there was another Nigerian woman. She thought that her and Wendy would be sisters and listen to Afro beats and have fun. So she's just so upset that they're on the outs. And NECA, how can you say that because you handle things the wrong way? If you truly wanted you and Wendy to be cool, you would have handled this a lot better. You would have called Wendy up immediately and said, hey girl, let's have a sit down conversation. Let's hash this out so that way we can be cool and not bring this to the group. The fact that you spoke about Wendy to Ashley in the first episode and then you sat down and had a conversation with Robin and talked about all this stuff, you spoke about this to everybody. You dogged Wendy out in the first three episodes. So how dare you say, well, I thought that we'd be sisters and have a good time. If you truly wanted to hash things out and clear the air with Wendy, you would have talked about this immediately one-on-one -on -one earlier on in this season. So there's no other way to slice it. You came on here trying to start up trouble. And I'm not saying that Wendy is 100% innocent, but what I am saying is that if you really wanted to have a relationship with Wendy, you would have cleared this up a lot sooner. So now Wendy goes on to say that the difference between her and NECA is that she's speaking facts about NECA called her mom a witch versus NECA is going off a third party and hearsay. So NECA says, no, it's not hearsay because Lebe can testify to what I'm saying. And my thing is this, don't bring us storylines that involve outside people. If we're going to talk about drama, let it be about stuff that we've seen on camera about this cast. But don't give me drama that involves your mom, your cousin, your friend, secondary characters that we don't see. So already I feel like NECA just dropped this. This entire sit down was a flop. 
Wendy says, let me tell you where I'm at with all this. You and I can move forward. We can coexist with each other, but you obviously don't want peace. And now she gets up from the table and leaves. So NECA's like, really, Wendy? You're the one who doesn't want peace. And now she calls Wendy a manipulator and we see NECA ask production to take her mic off and she starts crying. She says that her whole purpose was to apologize to Wendy, but Wendy's the one who doesn't want to hear anything. And then she says that Wendy knows that her family did this stuff, but she can't admit it. Let me be honest with you guys. This is the last time that I'll be addressing the Wendy and NECA beef. I am officially over it. I've tapped out. This is ridiculous and it's sad that we have drug out a storyline that should have been wrapped up eight episodes ago. It's just really aggravating because this should not even be a topic of discussion in the first place. And I am praying to God that Andy brings up the Essence article at this reunion. I hope he doesn't gloss over it. I'm dying to hear what they all have to say about it because that Essence article ripped everybody a new one. So now we jump over to Candace and Chris. They're both at home. And it was so funny because Candace had her Dior shopping bags on the couch because she just bought herself a new purse. Now that purple Lady Dior bag that she had, I said, girl, that's what I want to see on this show. Give us extravagance, yes ma'am. And that color was everything. I love Dior. The bag was chef's kiss. So now Chris brings up Candace's work schedule and he says, remember when I used to work at that rooftop bar last year and you were always complaining about how I was always gone, I was never home, and how we don't spend time together? Well, now that's you this year. And I said a quick side note, the reason why Chris is no longer at that rooftop because Giselle and Ashley lied on him. But I digress. But anyhow, Chris goes on to say that Candace is always gone. And we know that Candace is booked and busy between filming The Real Housewives, she's on that show called Hush, she's doing appearances, she was at the Grammy weekend with Victoria Monet and all the girls. I mean, she's booked. So I'm not surprised that she's never home. And I felt bad because the way Chris was saying it, you could tell that he's upset that he does not see his wife. So Candace goes on to say that she's getting ready for the second half of her Deep Space tour. And then she goes on to add that Chris now has his own YouTube channel and that's where he shares recipes. Now I'm happy to hear that. I hope his channel is doing well because I don't care what anybody tells you, YouTube is no joke. You are going to work for every view every dime. Do not let anybody sell you a dream that you just turn your camera on and it's just easy, okay? <laughs> Baby, you're going to work for every penny to get that check on the 22nd. <laughs> but I just really feel bad that he lost so many gigs because of what was said about him. Now, I like Chris and Candace together, but one thing I've always taken issue with is the way they communicate. I feel like they go from zero to 60 like that. You have Candace getting defensive. She's like, well, I wanna see you too. I wanna spend time with you as well. And I'm like, girl, I don't know why you're getting mad at your husband saying that he wants to see you more and spend time with you. That's not a bad thing. So now they get on the topic of the whole IVF process. And Candace says, I think about it every day, but there is some concern. Now, remember a few episodes ago, she had went in for a mammogram and then she got scared because the doctor said that they found something and she was nervous. So she says that she's afraid that the hormones from IVF might accelerate the fluid in her breast. So now she says that she got a letter from her doctor and she's kind of freaked out and she wants Chris to read it. So Chris reads it and he says, they said that you're fine. It's a swollen lymph node, you're good. So now Candace gets emotional and she's like, but what if it's not? And my family has a history of breast cancer and I want them to take this out of my breast immediately. So Chris says, I understand that, but there are gray areas with your health sometimes. And now you have Candace snap at him again. And I was like, Candace, I know that you're emotional. I know that you're worried. But girl, calm down. He's just trying to help you out and not freak out about it. 
and tell you that it's going to be okay. Now, while I think that Candace might be afraid because of health issues, I feel like she's stalling because she's not ready to have kids because her career is really taking off right now. I don't think that she wants to put that aside to go and have children just yet. I don't know, maybe I could be wrong, but I feel like she's just so busy. I don't really think that her having kids right now is at the top of her mind. Now, jumping over to Giselle, we see that it's the day of Grace's graduation. And all I have to say about this scene is congratulations, Grace. And it's so crazy that her girls have grown up so fast because Grace and the twins were like, what, 11 and 10 when she first joined the show? And now look at them, they're 17 and 18. So it's really nice seeing them blossom into beautiful and smart young ladies. And again, while I think that Giselle is messy and mean and just rude, I will say that I think that she's a great mom and I love seeing the relationship that she has with her girls. And that's all I've got. So now we jump on over to Robin, Neca, and Mia meeting up. They're doing some shopping before the trip. So Robin's asking Mia, how were her and Karen doing? Mia says, you know, me and Karen are good, she's fun, but she likes to act out every now and again. She goes on to say that at the Happy Eddie event, she got into it because she was trying to show out and impress Wendy. So because Wendy's name has been brought up, Robin goes on to ask NECA if her and Wendy met up to talk. So NECA says, yes, we did. I apologize to her. I apologize for calling her mom a witch and her a bitch, but she wasn't trying to hear it. And my apology wasn't good enough for her. No, I said, NECA, let's not tell these lies because that's not what happened. And Robin Dixon, the audacity and the gall for you to say, well, I'm not surprised because she's not trying to move forward or make up with you anyway. And I said, wait, not the same woman who refuses to make up with Candace or Wendy saying that Wendy's not trying to move forward. Like, what are you saying right now? You're the one holding a grudge, don't wanna to speak to them. I, I just said, it's the hypocrisy for me. It's just so crazy. So it's okay for your best friend Giselle to say that she never wants to be around Candace and Wendy, but when Wendy says that she's not trying to move forward with anybody, now that's an issue? Again, the goalpost is always moving, the rules are always changing, depending on who it is. Because I was in shock that Robin could actually twist her mouth to say, oh, well that's not surprising because that's how Wendy is. She's not trying to move forward or make up with you. Like, girl, stop. Now, I was waiting for them to actually do some shopping and it was so comical that nobody bought anything. I think Mia bought some thongs because when we see them at the register, the total is like $68. I said, girl, what? Where is the wealth? Where are the shopping sprees? On every other franchise, when they go out and shop, we see them spending $2,000, $5,800, and here you guys are spending $68? Ladies, may we get a word? Hide the money, y'all. There's poor people around. <laughs> With your broke ass. <laughs> I said, damn, you couldn't spend 168 or 268, just 68? <laughs> if y'all are going to be insufferable where nobody gets along and there's so much tension amongst the group, can you guys at least give us glam and luxe, please? So now it's the day of their Dominican Republic trip. Everybody's at the airport. Everybody's in good spirits for the most part. And we see that Robin also extended the invite to Kierna as well. And she says that they're also friends and she met her through Giselle. But I feel like we haven't seen Kierna all season. So they touch down in the DR. They're now on the Sprinter van. And Robin says that she wants it to be a fun trip and they're all going to be staying in a private villa. So Karen thanks Robin for inviting them all to this trip. And then she goes on to add that Ray stays at the same resort every single year for his golfing tournament. So she goes on to tell this story about how 27 years ago when they were newlyweds, he went on the trip to play golf and she called his hotel room and another woman picked up and said, hello, Ray's not here. 
So they're all like, girl, what? So she says that Ray told her it was the housekeeper. Giselle was not buying this story. She was like, girl, what housekeeper do you know who picks up the phone? Then she says that Ray pulled the okie doke on Karen. And I said, now Giselle, you know firsthand what it's like to have the okie doke pulled on you. You are married to Pastor Jamal Bryant, who was running around with anybody and everybody who had a pulse and two legs. So girl, I said not too much on Karen and Ray. He was having a good old time running through that church. But Karen, I don't know why you told that story. I would have kept that to myself. <laughs> so they arrived to their private villa at Casa de Campo and the villa is gorgeous. Robin, you did a nice job. So I'll give you two points for that because I am a hotel snob. So I said, you know what? I will always give credit where credit is due. But anyhow, they're greeted by the staff. They have champagne waiting for them. And now we see Wendy take over and say, I just want to say thank you, Robin, for this trip. And let's toast to having fun and no drama. Wendy's trying to be cordial and talk to everybody because we know that Giselle and Robin have been giving her the cold shoulder all season and they were actually receptive to her toast. I said, very surprising. So as they're toasting, we see Kierna run off to the bathroom. Her stomach was torn up. We find out that her ulcer started acting up on the plane and I thought production was so shady to add in the sound effects of her stomach rumbling like that. I said, y'all don't have to do that. <laughs> and I felt so bad for her. I said, what's with everybody on these trips getting sick? First, it was Crystal being taken away by the ambulance in Barcelona on Beverly Hills. Then Gertie from Miami got sick in Mexico City. And now we have Kierna running off with stomach issues too. I'm like, damn. But let me say this. Kierna's confessional look was a 10 out of 10. She looked gorgeous. I said, come through. I want her to come back as a full-time cast member. I think that Kierna is interesting and I think that she could actually bring it and hold her own as a full-time cast member. And it seems like everybody likes her. The Green Eyed Bandits like her, Mia likes her, Wendy and Candace like her. So that's always good that the whole cast likes you. That's always a plus, right? So they're getting a tour of the villa. And mind you, there are nine women on this trip and you have eight bedrooms, four single rooms and four double rooms. So that means that a good majority of these women are going to have to share. So anyhow, since Robin is the host of the trip, she gets the best room and her room was amazing. I said, talk about a suite. They did that. So Robin's going over the room assignments. She says, since Giselle and I always share rooms, Giselle gets her first choice. She's getting a single room. Ashley, since it's your birthday, you get your own room as well. So we see that Mia, Wendy, Candace, and Kierna all have to share rooms. Karen was not having it. She said, oh, absolutely not. She said, no, ma'am, I'm not sharing. Now, Karen, I get it. I don't want to share a room either. But considering how you have never shared a room on any of the vacations your entire time on this show, it's not going to kill you to share a room. And Robin did have a point. She said that Giselle and I have always shared a room since season one. So I think that you'll be okay if you have to share a room this time around. And I agree. I think, girl, it's a beautiful villa, five-star accommodations. You're not going to die if you have to share for the next three or four days. So Karen said, once again, I'm not sharing. I'm getting my own room with the view. I have my credit card out. So we see that it's going to be $5,000 in pesos for Karen to get her own room. And they're all like, girl, it's not that deep. Really, Karen? And Karen says, girl, I'm getting my own room. I don't care. I have the coin. It is what it is. Bling, bling, bling. Bitches is mad. <laughs> Now, I don't know if it was just me, but I noticed that Karen never took her credit card out. I was waiting to see her fork her American Express over and say, here you go, and it never happened. And I saw later on, she gave that weak excuse saying, oh, well, I didn't get my own room because the villa manager got scared off. Nobody is scared off when it comes to money. 
I don't think that you really wanted to part with that $5,000 in pesos. <laughs> I think Karen was banking on production paying for the room. And when she saw that they weren't, she said, you know what? I'm okay. <laughs> So Karen goes on this long rant about how she needs to have her own room because she hates feeling boxed in and she gets claustrophobic. They were all like, Karen, if you don't stop it. And I just said, Karen, if it's that serious, then walk back over to the manager and ask for your own room then. I don't know. I feel like we know how this goes. On every trip, there's always some issue with the room because they want to have some drama for the show. So at this point, everybody's trying to get settled in. We see Wendy and Candace by the pool, and now Robin passes by, and they're like, Robin, what's going on with the whole Karen situation about the room? So Robin's telling them that Ashley offered up her room so Karen could have it, and Karen's being difficult. So as she's telling them what's going on, Karen walks up and she's like, Robin, be quiet. Shut the F up. You're not even telling the story right. And of course her and Robin get into it. So Karen's like, I hate listening to your raggedy ass. Like, girl, shut up. Robin's like, blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to shut up. And I feel like Robin and Karen enjoy arguing because if you've noticed, since the beginning of this show, they've always gone at it. I really think that those are two people where their love language is arguing because they both get a kick out of getting under each other's skin. But anyhow, we now see Robin go off to everybody's rooms, telling them the agenda. And I was shocked when Robin went into Wendy and Candace's room and she said, oh, I just want you to know the rundown for tonight. We're going to play night golf at seven and then we're going to go out for dinner. So Wendy's like, okay, sounds good. And I was just like, in that moment, it low key felt like Robin and Wendy were friends again. Despite how I feel about Robin, I think that it's a good thing to see her finally be mature and speak to Wendy instead of ignoring her. I think that this is how it's supposed to be where you guys should be able to fight and argue, but still come together and be cordial and speak to each other when y'all are around. So I said, okay, finally, it's not all this BS of you're icing somebody out. We're finally seeing some maturity. So as everybody's getting ready for the night, Karen is sitting on the couch in the living room and Ashley comes over and she's like, girl, what's going on? So Karen says, I don't have a room. I'm homeless. I don't have anywhere to lay my head. I'm just going to sleep here on the sofa for the next three days. And I was just like, Karen, Ashley already offered up her room to you. Just take her offer. So Ashley's like, Karen, it does not have to be this way. I'll room with Mia. Just take my room and let's just stop this. So of course, Robin comes over and her and Karen get into it again. So Karen's like, well, thank you, Ashley. Thank you for saving me. And now you have Robin saying, Karen, you need to apologize. Baby, Karen ate Robin all the way up. She said, Robin, get the <laughs> my face. <laughs> now here's where I feel like Giselle was stirring the pot and wants to create a wedge between Kierna and Wendy and Candace. Kierna's in her room getting ready. Giselle comes in to check on her. And she says, how are you feeling? How are you doing? Because on the plane ride, it was a mess. So Kierna says, thank you so much for checking on me because nobody else gave a damn. So now Giselle says, Kierna was visibly sick and her so-called friends didn't even check on her. Now, while Giselle's motives, in my opinion, aren't the purest, I think that she definitely checked on Kierna to throw it back in Wendy and Candace's face that they didn't. But I will say that she does have a point because if you and I are relatively good friends and I notice that you're sick, there's no way that I would not check on you. So I found it a bit strange that Wendy and Candace did not check on her. And it's a sad day when Giselle has you beat on caring about somebody. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm really hoping that Giselle doesn't try to turn Kierna against Wendy and Candace because I can see that happening. 
So now we cut to Giselle, Mia, Ashley, and Robin all in Giselle's room. And Giselle has a trick up her sleeve. She says that she wants to do something for NECA since NECA is new to the group and they all like her. So Giselle goes on to say that she doesn't like the fact that Karen threw shade about NECA's house, saying that NECA is in North Potomac and how she owns her house in Potomac and she's not a renter. Her name is on the deed. So they're all listening like, okay, girl, let's get to the point. And Giselle says, I want to crown NECA as the new grand dame of Potomac. They're all shocked. And Giselle says that she already has a sash made up for her and a crown. And she wants to crown NECA before they go off to night golf and dinner. So Mia's laughing. And now Ashley says that Karen is going to die when she sees this. So Giselle says that because she's the one who gave Karen the title of the grand dame, she gave it and she can take it away. And I was like, Giselle, you're giving yourself too much credit. It just feels like jealousy and hate that Karen took a fun and silly nickname and ran with it and made a whole brand out of it. So I think that's the reason why Giselle wants to strip her of her title. But you can give NECA that title all you want to, but we're not going to ever refer to her as a grand dame. And you're setting NECA up for failure by even trying to have her be the grand dame junior. It's just silly. So we see everybody out by the pool. And before they go off to play night golf, Giselle says that she has an announcement and she says, this group is very special and a lot has gone down over the last year. So Giselle goes on to say that NECA is new to the group and how she just moved to Potomac and how she was upset when she heard that Karen had thrown shade about NECA living in North Potomac. So now Karen says, NECA, you told on me, really? I thought we were having a girl's moment. So NECA's like, no, Karen, you said that I lived in North Potomac, but it's all good, we're fine. So now Giselle says, we're at a coronation and I'm now crowning NECA as the Grand Dame of Potomac 20854. So they're all like, really? Karen's face was like, bitch, please. <laughs> Karen says they just can't help themselves. So we end the episode with Candace storming off and she says any opportunity that that sinister imp has to implicate harm on other people and pain, she's going to take it. And I said, not a sinister imp. <laughs> Say what you want about Candace. Her reads are lethal. That mouth is deadly and that vocabulary is top tier. <laughs> <laughs> but that's where the episode ends. And guys, when I tell you, I think it's just really sad that we were cheated out of a really good season. I think that Bravo needs to go back to the drawing board when it comes to Potomac and we need to see some changes because we deserve a cast that can be fun and lighthearted and just get along. It's just not fun. It's very uncomfortable to watch a group of women who hate each other and have to be forced to be around each other. That's not good TV. But guys, thank you all for watching my recap. I hope you all enjoy and you already know what to do. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all later. Bye.